Hi, my name's Scott Hebbard from Spark Systems. Enterprise Architect is a full lifecycle UML based modeling tool that is used for the planning, design and construction of software intensive systems and business processes. This webinar will introduce you to some of the core modeling concepts used by over 300,000 Enterprise Architect users around the world. You'll learn how to install Enterprise Architect and step through the process of creating a simple model containing a mind mapping diagram and a class diagram. At the conclusion of this video you should be able to build a simple model from scratch and identify key interface components such as a project browser, toolbox and properties dialog. Enterprise Architect can be downloaded from the registered user section of the Spark Systems website. It's shown here on screen in the top right corner. You will receive your username and password credentials when you purchase Enterprise Architect. You can then use these credentials to access the latest build of Enterprise Architect for 12 months after your purchase date. This helps to ensure that you're always up to date with the latest tools and technologies from Spark Systems. The registered users section contains a link at the top of the page to download the latest build of Enterprise Architect. The registered download section contains a number of links but we are interested in the Enterprise Architect installer which is called easetupfull.exe. Simply click and download the Enterprise Architect installer to your local machine. Once the file has been downloaded, double click the installation file and follow the on-screen prompts to complete the installation. You can run Enterprise Architect using the Start menu or the blue icon located on your desktop. Let's begin by creating a new project. The goal of this project is to create a simple mind mapping diagram and class diagram using Enterprise Architect. Enterprise Architect prompts me to enter the name and location of my project. I shall save my getting started project on the desktop using an extension of .eap. The Enterprise Architect Model Wizard then prompts me to select a model pattern. I shall select a mind mapping diagram which is ideal for organising your thoughts, planning meetings and visualising relationships. Ben and I often use this technique during webinars to help illustrate key concepts. On the right of screen you'll see the Project Browser. The Project Browser is used to browse and explore your Enterprise Architect model. Enterprise Architect has automatically created a tree-like structure in the project browser containing a mind mapping diagram and several model elements. The start page provides access to tools and resources when you first open Enterprise Architect. It allows you to access the Learning Center, the Enterprise Architect Help. It also allows you to access the Enterprise Architect Example Model contains lots of examples for you to look at. You also have access to keyboard accelerators and a number of tools for customising the interface of Enterprise Architect. All of your recent Enterprise Architect models will be listed on screen and you can also access a number of online resources such as the newsletter, webinar registration and Enterprise Architect community site. To open a diagram, simply double click the diagram in the project browser. The mind mapping diagram will be displayed in the diagram view of the workspace. Each diagram will appear in a separate tab, allowing you to easily switch between multiple diagrams. Using the model pattern, Enterprise Architect has done much of the work for us. It has created an underlying structure, including central topics, main topics, topics and subtopics. It has even included a note on screen which indicates start creating a mind mapping model by dropping elements from the toolbox onto this diagram. I would like to add a few additional topics to the mind map 
to describe the contents of my webinar. I shall begin by using a main topic and dragging it onto the diagram. When I release the mouse, Enterprise Architect will automatically bring up the Properties dialog, which can allow me to name my element. Let's do this now. If I use Control and click at the same time, I can create new elements of the same type. So let's do that now. This is a great technique for rapidly creating elements on a diagram. Once again, Enterprise Architect prompts me with a Properties dialog. In addition to adding the name, I can set the status. For example, I can set it to Proposed. I can modify the complexity, version, phase, and I can outline who the author of each element is. The Notes panel at the bottom of the Properties dialog allows me to describe the element in great detail. Now that I've created elements on screen, I can move them to their desired location. I'm now going to use Alignment Tools to align and space the elements as required. The small arrow at the top of each element is called the Quick Linker. The Quick Linker can be used to rapidly establish relationships between elements, and to create new elements from scratch. Once again, you simply drag the quick linker from one element to another, and then specify which relationship you'd like to create. Now that I've created my two elements for creating a mind map and creating a class diagram, I'd like to modify the existing elements to outline what I've covered so far in this webinar. So I'm going to bring up the Properties dialog and modify all of the names and topics so that it better reflects this webinar's content. You'll note that the toolbox provides a panel of context-sensitive icons that are used to build your model. Every time you switch to a different diagram, the toolbox adapts so that you always have the tools you need at hand. The icons are organised into pages, making it easier to find common tools and connectors. In this webinar, we've looked at installation. I talked about the registered users section, including information about credentials. I showed you how to download and install Enterprise Architect. We explored the user interface, including the project browser, the toolbox. We've shown you how to create a mind map from scratch. And now the next part is to create a class diagram. It's very important to note that the asterisk on the tab indicates that this particular diagram has not been saved. So it's important that we save the diagram before we move on to creating a new diagram. Let's begin by opening the project browser and pinning it to our workspace. The goal of this exercise is to create a simple class diagram representing a bank account. Using the context menu, create a simple view under the root node called Banking System. A view is a top level package within a model. Views are used to contain packages, diagrams and model elements. There are a number of different view types, such as a use case view, component view, or deployment view. The next step is to create a package to display the logical view of our model. This package will contain my class diagram and corresponding model elements. I will select each checkbox to automatically add and open a new diagram. Using the New Diagram dialog, I will create a YAML class diagram. Looking at the project browser, I've now created a view, a package, and a diagram. As I switch between diagrams, you'll notice that the contents of the toolbox will dynamically change to cater for each different diagram type. Use Control-Tab to rapidly switch between diagrams 
Enterprise Architect provides a preview of each diagram, making it easier to find what you need. To create a class diagram representing a bank account, simply drag a class from the toolbox onto the diagram and name it accordingly. I shall make two additional classes representing a savings account and a credit card account. Each bank account needs to have a name and a balance. So in order to add these attributes, I will use Control Shift F9 and Enterprise Architect will automatically add an attribute to my class. I often use this keyboard shortcut as it helps to build a class diagram quite quickly. Enterprise Architect will create an attribute. Simply enter the appropriate name and type for each attribute. For example, I'm going to create a bank account name of type string and the balance will be an integer. In addition to attributes, a class diagram can also have operations. Use Control Shift F10 to add an operation. The operations on an account are limited to deposit and withdrawal. The savings and credit card account both require an attribute representing their respective interest rates. So once again I shall use Control Shift F9 to add those attributes. Use the Quick Linker to establish a relationship between each class. Enterprise Architect will automatically take care of any overrides or inheritance issues where appropriate. The final part of this diagram is to create a heading for the diagram. I will adjust the font and colour as required and save my diagram. So here in a few easy steps we have designed and built a class diagram that could be used as the basis of a software specification in the finance and banking industry. The purpose of this webinar is to outline some of the basic concepts that you need to know when getting started with Enterprise Architect. The webinar began with a discussion on how to access the registered users section of the Spark Systems website to download and install Enterprise Architect. The webinar went on to examine the user interface including the project browser, start menu, toolbox and diagram workspace. Remember to use the Learning Centre and other online resources to learn more about Enterprise Architect. Using a model pattern, we then used Enterprise Architect to build a mind mapping diagram. Each topic in the diagram corresponded to a different central theme in the webinar. And finally we built a simple class diagram that contained attributes and operations. This demonstration outlined how to create a view, package and diagram from scratch. For more information on Enterprise Architect or to download a free 30-day trial, please visit www.sparksystems.com.